In this video, we're going to be taking a look at macromolecules, and this is an introduction to macromolecules. So organic chemistry is where we're going to get started. In almost all biological molecules, you can find carbon. Now carbon is an essential component, and because it is, scientists have devoted an entire branch of science to it, and this branch is called organic chemistry. Now carbon atoms can be formed to join carbon molecules. Small carbon compounds serve as the building blocks of large molecules called macromolecules. So here we have this prefix macro. Macro means large, micro means small, and macro means large. And because we're talking about macromolecules, we're talking about large molecules. Now these large molecules, the macromolecules, are also called polymers. Now poly means many, and you'll see this throughout the uh, podcast today. Now these polymers are built from monomers, mono meaning one, which are small molecules made up of repeating identical or nearly identical compounds. So here we have some uh, words that seem very unfamiliar. We have monomers and we have polymers. Well, if mono means one and we put these monomers together, several of them, we don't have one monomer. We have a set of monomers, which are just one piece, and they together make polymer. So you can think of monomers like Lego blocks. And when you start putting a lot of them together, you don't call them monomers, you call them polymers. Poly meaning many. Now these are linked together by covalent bonds to form macromolecules. And there are four macromolecules. They are carbohydrates, lipids, which are fats, proteins, and nucleic acids. So the first one we're going to talk about is carbohydrates, which are uh, break down into sugar and monosaccharides and disaccharides. And we have some large words here, but don't let them intimidate you. We're going to talk about what each of them mean. So carbohydrates is one of the four macromolecules. They are composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now for each carbon molecule, there are two hydrogen and one oxygen. Glucose is what carbohydrates convert to, and glucose is a monosaccharide. So this is the energy source for organisms. Now here we have that word mono again, mono meaning one, saccharide meaning sugar. There's one sugar molecule. Now two monosaccharides can join together to form a disaccharide, which is also an energy, energy source like table sugar, lactose and milk, uh, whatever. Now the disaccharide, the DI means two, so we have two sugar molecules, which is why it's a disaccharide. If we have one saccharide or one sugar molecule, it's a monosaccharide. Now, longer chains of carbohydrates are called polysaccharides. So if we have one, it's called a monosaccharide. If we have two, it's called a disaccharide. If we have two or more, we have many saccharides, and that's where the poly saccharide comes in. Now one important polysaccharide is called glycogen, which is an energy storage form of glucose. Now when the body needs energy between meals, your body will break down glycogen into glucose so you can have energy. Sometimes you go may have to go a long period without food, without eating. Well that's no problem. Your body will take glycogen that is stored in your body, turn it into glucose so you can have the energy that you need. Now in plants, Carbohydrates are used to make cellulose, and that helps the plants make their cell walls. Uh, chitin, shrimp, lobster, and other crustaceans are made of polysaccharides with nitrogen that helps make the hard outer shells. All right, let's take a look at a monosaccharide and a disaccharide and a polysaccharide. So here we have a uh, we have glucose, which is a sugar molecule, and I know it's a carbohydrate because I see carbon hydrogen, and oxygen. And when I go back to my notes, it tells me right here, carbohydrates are composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So when I'm looking at my notes and tie it back to, it makes uh, a bit of sense. So we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Well, when I have two of these monosaccharides together, it's no longer called glucose, it's called sucrose. And sucrose is two sugar molecules, and that is a disaccharide. Well, what if I have more than two? Like here in this example, I have one, two, three, four. That's more than two. So I call that a polysaccharide. Poly meaning many. All right, let's continue with lipids, which are the uh, fats. Now lipids are also made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now these make up your fats, oils, and waxes. It's another one of the four macromolecules. Now the primary function of lipids is to store energy. 
but long-term energy. So carbohydrates give, uh, give us energy, but that's short-term energy. Lipids give us long-term energy, and your fats can be used later on to give you uh, energy. Now, is triglyceride a fat? Or is it an oil? Well, a lot of people say it's uh, one or the other, but it really depends on if it's a solid or a liquid. If it is solid at room temperature, it's considered a fat. If it's liquid at room temperature, it's an oil. But either way, it is a lipid because lipids make up fats, oils, and waxes. Now, triglycerides are stored in the fat cells of the body. Organisms need lipids to function properly. Yes, that is correct. You need fats in order to function properly. Now, saturated fats, you probably have heard the term saturated and unsaturated. It's very easy to distinguish the difference between saturated and unsaturated fats. Now, saturated fats are bonds between the carbon atoms and the lipids with only single bonds. So if there is a single, only single bonds, it's a saturated fat. If there's at least one double bond between the carbon atoms and the lipid, then it's an unsaturated fat. Now, if there's more than one double bond, then it's a polyunsaturated fat, meaning there are many, uh, many double bonds, so it's a polyunsaturated fat. So next time you see that on a uh, nutrition label, you'll know what they're talking about, single and double bonds. All right, phospholipids and steroids. Now, a special lipid type, and this is not a macromolecule. Lipids are macromolecules, but this is a special type of lipid. Now, is the phospholipid, which helps make up the cell membrane, and it's very, uh, very important. Lipids are hydrophobic, so hydro meaning water, phobic meaning afraid, and they don't dissolve in water. Now, this is a great thing for our cells. If you were drinking water and your cell membranes were not hydrophobic, they would dissolve and that that would be well that would be death now lipids serve as barriers in biological membranes steroids are special types of lipids that are hormones and cholesterol now cholesterol even though people talk about avoiding it and saying you know you need to get your cholesterol under control it's actually good for you in the right amount so does it mean you know go out and you know jack up that cholesterol it's good for you in the right amounts too much too much of anything would be uh, bad for you now cholesterol is good for you because it's actually the starting point for other necessary lipids such as vitamin d and the hormones estrogen and testosterone so guys who are producing testosterone build muscle uh, they're more active uh, women who produce estrogen that allows them to develop the female body parts now one problem that a lot of students have is Carbohydrates versus lipids, how do I tell the difference? Because they both have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. So how can we tell the difference if they're made of the same thing? Well, it's very easy. So here's a picture of a carbohydrate, and notice it has a ring-shaped structure. All right, it's almost like a circle almost. These carbon uh, atoms here, they are bound together, of course, and we have a glucose molecule because that's what carbohydrates turn into, but it has a ring or circular shape structure. Lipids don't even come close to this shape. They're more like three straight lines, and this is a triglyceride, and I know because I have three chains here, but we see these are like three straight lines, and there's not any remotely circular shape. So if it's carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, and you're trying to figure out, is it a carbohydrate or is it a lipid? It's a carbohydrate if it has a ring structure. It is a lipid if it has more like a straight line structure. So that will really uh, help you out. All right, let's keep pressing on. So the third of the uh, four macromolecules is proteins. They're composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but it has one more thing that carbohydrates and lipids do not have, and that is nitrogen. So we have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen again, but this time we've tacked on nitrogen, and that makes it a protein. Now, a compound made of smaller compounds uh, are called amino acids. So amino acids are smaller compounds, and amino acids are the building blocks of proteins, and proteins are the building blocks of life. Now, amino acids are the building blocks of protein, just like we said. Now, carbon can form four covalent bonds. In proteins, there's a central carbon atom. Now, one bond is to hydrogen, one is to an amino group, NH2, and one to a carboxyl group, and one to a variable group that we just label R. 
Now, depending on what R is, which is just a variable, determines the type of amino acid it is. And there are over 20 different amino acids. So R can stand for literally over 20 different things. Now, peptide bonds join amino acids together. So don't let this peptide word you know, confuse you. All it means is if we're talking about peptide bonds, we're talking about amino acids that have been joined together. Polypeptides, which mean many peptide bonds, which mean many, many, many amino acids are joined together. And when you have many amino acids joined together, they make up a protein. Because if I look right back here, it says a uh, protein is a compound made of smaller compounds called amino acids. And amino acids are the building blocks. You get a lot of them together they will make up a protein. Now, proteins make up about 15% of your body mass, and they include muscle, skin, and your hair. Your cells contain about 100,000 different proteins. So your body's doing a lot of this on its own. It's using those amino acids to build those proteins. Now, proteins also provide structural support. They transport substances in and out of cells. They speed up chemical reactions. We talked about that in class, these enzymes in these catalysts being made up of proteins, and they also help control cell growth. All right, almost done, only two slides left, and we have nucleic acids, and this brings us to the fourth macromolecule of the uh, four groups. And nucleic acids store and transmit genetic information. Now, you may say, I've never heard of nucleic acids. Believe it or not, you actually have. There are two types of nucleic acids, DNA and RNA. This is great because when you see DNA or RNA, you know right away it's a nucleic acid because that's what the NA stands for. It stands for nucleic acid. So when we're talking about DNA or RNA, we don't have to do a whole lot of thinking. It's already there for us. The NA stands for nucleic acid. Now, the DNA stands for deoxyribose nucleic acid, and then RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. Now, they're made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but there are two other things added. If we just had carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, it would be a protein. But we add one more thing that changes it from a protein to a nucleic acid, and that is phosphorus. Now, nucleic acids are made of smaller repeating units called nucleotides. ATP is a nucleotide, and ATP stands for adenosine triphosphate. What in the world does that mean? That sounds complicated, but it's not. It's really a fancy way of saying energy. Now, ATP has three phosphate groups. Well, it should because right here it says triphosphate. I know tri means three, and phosphate, we're talking about phosphate. It has three phosphate groups. Now, when the bond between the second and third group is broken, a large amount of energy is released. And when the, second, the bond between the second and third group is broken, we're left with only two phosphate molecules, and that now makes a DP, adenosine di phosphate, di meaning two. Now, the body can break the bond between the first and second group, but it doesn't because less energy would be released. A lot of times students ask, well, what about the first and second group? Will it break that bond? It will not. It could, but only small amounts of energy would be released. Now, there are five major nucleotides, and each have a phosphate group, a nitrogen base, and a sugar. Uh, we're going to talk more about these later in the year uh, when we talk more in depth about ATP. So to wrap up this podcast, we have four uh, macromolecules. We have carbohydrates, we have lipids, we have proteins, and we have nucleic acids. Car carbohydrates and lipids both made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen. Now, our carbohydrates provide structural support and store energy, but it's short-term energy, not long-term energy. Any carbohydrates that you consume and don't use will get converted to lipids and turn into long-term energy. A lot of people talk about carving up before a football game. That's so they have energy during the football game. Our lipids they store energy, long-term energy, but they also provide our cellular barriers because remember, they're hydrophobic. Now, also made of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen with one extra thing added is proteins, and that one extra thing is nitrogen. They transport substances in and out of the cells. They speed up reactions. Those are the enzymes that we talked about made of proteins. They provide structural support, and they control cell growth. Now, made of carbon, 
Hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, and one additional thing, phosphorus, makes nucleic acids. And this stores in, uh, communicates genetic information. This is the DNA and RNA. Everything that makes up who you are, the genes in your body, those are the nucleic acids. So that's it for macromolecules. Uh, in class, we're really going to dive deep and get even a further understanding of these. So make sure you bring your podcast notes, bring any questions you have, and we'll see you guys in class.